we begin tonight with breaking news in East Phoenix. A large police presence is in the area of 32nd Street and Thomas, where officers are investigating a shooting right now. Good evening and thanks so much for joining us. For 12 News at 10, I'm Cuddy the Divine. I'm Mark Curtis. Let's get you right out to the scene where 12 News journalist Jonathan McCall has the latest tonight. Mark Caribe, good evening. Right now, Phoenix police still trying to piece together this still very active scene at 34th Place and Thomas. You can see officers have swarmed in on Tower Liquors here at the corner. This is one of two scenes involved in this ongoing investigation. Here is what we know so far. Just before 745 this evening, officers say they were called to a shooting around a 32nd Street and Earl Drive, which is about two blocks north of where we're at right now. Officers say after that shooting, the suspects left the scene. As officers were responding to that scene, that's when they say, as they were coming into the neighborhood, they located a car matching the description of the suspect's vehicle wanted in that shooting. When they got to that scene, they say they found that car at Tower Liquors, that red minivan that you see in your screen. After that, they were officers say they were able to detain three adults from that car, two women and one man near that liquor store here at 34th Street and Thomas. The victim, were told, taken to the hospital with a gunshot wound expected to be Okay, after that shooting, as we mentioned, still a lot of pieces to put together about the scene, exactly what happened, what led up to that shooting, uh, and how they were able to just so quickly get those three suspects into custody without incident. 12 News cameras were able to capture at least two people detained here sitting on the ground near this scene as well. A lot of information to still kind of process through. We'll continue to stay in contact with Phoenix Police and bring you any new updates as soon as we learn them. We're in the East Valley tonight. I'm Jonathan McCall, 12 News. All right, Jonathan, thank you. Now from the 12 News I team, a change in policy after one officer spoke up. Last week, the I team brought you the story of a Yavapai Apache Nation police officer who was shot in the line of duty and then fired from his job. Today, we're learning that he may already be making an impact. I team reporter Bianca Bono has the update, and we do want to warn you that some of the video you're about to see is from the night of the shooting, and it is disturbing. 223, shots fired, shots fired, officer down. February 9th, 2022, Yavapai Apache Nation Police Sergeant Preston Brogdon was shot by a suspect. Come on, Preston. Come on. Come on. I'm going to drag you. He somehow survived with life-altering injuries, two surgeons deeming him disabled. I don't regret being injured. I don't regret protecting the community. Um... It's my job. His department and tribal leaders rallied around him, supporting him and his family. They all, you know, made promises, and I am a trusting person. I, I ran with that. Like, we're going to be okay because they're going to pass retirement for him and we're going to have something. But that didn't happen. Despite efforts since March of 2022, the Yavapai Apache Tribal Council never finalized the police department's participation in the state's medical retirement program, leading Brogdon to speak up. I don't want to give the nation a black eye. That's, that's not my intention. My intention is be held accountable for your actions. It's just wrong what they're doing. It's wrong what they have done. But on Thursday, 12 News learned of a major shift in policy. According to Tribal Chairwoman Tanya Lewis, the Yavapai Apache Nation Tribal Council has passed a resolution to join the public safety personnel retirement system, meaning their officers will be eligible for retirement. A move that comes too late for Brogdon, but a relief for tribal officers who come next. I definitely think that he's got a calling on his life. I even think that this is for a reason. And I think that that reason is to protect officers from experiencing what we're going through. As for the help that's out there for the Brogdons, they tell me they're working on applying for disability insurance through Social Security and working on a settlement with tribal leaders. Bianca Bono, 12 News. Bianca, thank you. We are learning more about how Phoenix police officers captured three suspects accused of shooting and injuring off-duty Phoenix police officer Harold Boswell last Friday night. 
Police say that 19 year old Jemiah Mauer and two 17 year old boys attempted to rob someone at gunpoint late Friday night near 35th Avenue in Southern. Police say that the suspects ran off, leaving investigators with only video surveillance. Mauer left town, but police were able to track him down in Las Vegas. The teens were arrested in surprise and in El Mirage. Right now, Phoenix police are searching for a woman who went missing yesterday afternoon. Show you a picture right now of 51 year old Amber Bretch. Today, MCSO responded to a call about an abandoned car in the White Tank Mountain Regional Park. They believe that car belonged to her. If you know anything about her whereabouts, give Phoenix Police a call. Former Arizona Cardinals executive Terry McDonough has filed a new lawsuit against team owner Michael Bidwell after an NFL arbitrator recently ruled in his favor in a previous suit. McDonough filed the suit because of a statement issued after he made his arbitration claim against the Cardinals last year. That statement accused McDonough of domestic violence against his wife and abandonment of his daughter, which were proved false in arbitration. Now, this recent suit comes after an arbitrator ruled the Cardinals must pay McDonough $3 million for false and malicious statements made in the released statement. Time to check in with meteorologist Ginger Jeffries. And Ginger, I had dinner outside tonight. It was gorgeous and warm. And tomorrow night, I'll probably need a winter coat, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to switch out the short pants for the long pads once again because we're on this roller coaster, folks. Today, we were five degrees above the average range. By tomorrow, taking a sharp dive, 15 degrees below our average tomorrow. That's a springtime roller coaster ride, and it's all because of a little bit of a winter storm that's going to be rolling on through in under 24 hours. So, highs today, 89. Overnight lows, 59. Normal, 83. Record, okay, we're not getting there yet, but spoiler alert, we do have some 90s in the seven day forecast for tomorrow a spring mix we're going for daytime highs at about 66 degrees we've got a lot of wind to talk about wind out of the southwest 15 to 25 miles an hour of course higher elevations going to see stronger winds and notice some of these winds are going to peak over 50 miles an hour so clearly as moisture gets closer we're going to tighten up the pressure gradient and the result for us in the phoenix valley area that means a lot of wind higher elevations rim country that means the onset of not just rain, freezing rain, but also the potential for snow. Now, this is a fast moving system and it doesn't have a lot of moisture, so it's going to push on through before Saturday morning. But what exactly do you need to be uh, ready for tomorrow? I'll detail that coming up my full forecast. Back to you. All right, Ginger, thanks. A three year old boy is in the hospital tonight after being bitten by a rattlesnake in North Scottsdale. Officials with Scottsdale Fire tell us the boy was bitten on his leg at the Granite Mountain Trail just before 11 o'clock this morning. He was walking the trail with his grandfather. Thankfully, the boy is expected to be okay. If you ever do encounter a rattlesnake, Scottsdale Fire says the most important thing you can do is leave it alone and slowly back away to a safe distance. Officials say you should also let other hikers know about where the snake is.